Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm gonna talk about seven things you need to know in order to get great results using Luminar Neo. I don't wanna waste your time, let's get into it. I've got a completely grungy scene here. This is a graffiti alley in London, England. I absolutely love it, it's fantastic and this kind of stuff is super fun to shoot. Uh, but the nice thing is, is even if you don't go shoot grungy graffiti alleys, in some far-flung destination, these seven tips work on every single photo. Doesn't matter if it's a landscape or a cityscape or something like this, they're gonna work. The first thing is, tip number one, you have to learn how to maneuver around and use all the different tools within Develop Raw. Now, I'm not gonna dive into every single aspect of it, but you have to be able to learn to control your image. And so, in this one, the first glance, you look at it and you're just noticing that it's dark, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the exposure the highlights are honestly completely blown. Here's a sub tip. If you hit the J key, J as in Jim, hit the J key, you will notice that these two little uh, dots activate in the histogram. That's another sub tip. Keep the histogram right there at all times. If you don't have the histogram there, click view and show histogram and it will show up. But the reason why the J key is important is because as soon as I hit it, this little red stuff showed up there and there and the blue stuff showed up here. Well, the red indicates hey, that's completely blown out, and the blue indicates, hey, that's completely black. So it's a good indication, a visual representation of what's blown out and what's completely black. Now, in a photo like this, I kind of don't care because it's a grungy alley full of graffiti, and we're going to do whatever we want to the photo. This is not a portfolio piece. It's fun to edit, but still important to keep that J key activated as you're editing. So I know the highlights are blown. I'm going to pull them down to negative 100. It still doesn't matter. It doesn't help. That's okay. Again, don't really care on this photo, uh, but then I wanna go ahead and lift the shadows. After that, I wanna go add a little bit of contrast because I felt like I got a nice flat canvas and I like to do that before I go and add contrast. So now I'm coming back and adding contrast. I'm going to about 23. Now, having looked at this, I also know that to me, it's too yellow, too warm overall. That means I'm gonna drop the temperature, an incredibly important component of Develop Raw, as is tint. I don't use saturation. Uh, almost never, and I use vibrance very little. I'm gonna use sharpening here, 20, but I'm, I'm gonna skip vibrance this time. But if you look at the before and the after, you can see I've got a much better control over the light. Now there's a lot we're gonna do to this photo. That's only step number one, learning develop raw. Step number two is super contrast. This is just an incredibly important tool, and I think perfectly aligns with using develop raw first for controlling the light. Take a look at what I've just done to the highlights. I did the highlights contrast and the balance. You can see the numbers there. But if you look at the before and the after, and if you zoom in on things like that graffiti and that graffiti, let me show you the before, much brighter in certain areas, right? Those are the highlights I'm controlling with super contrast, a much brighter look, and now much more kind of reserved and kind of calm uh, tones in that area. So that's what I love about super contrast, but I'm not done. I'm still gonna play with it a little bit here and shadows contrast is going to about a 24, and the balance is going to about a 27 or 28. Overall, massive impact on the tones in the image. Before super contrast and after, that's why for me it's always tool number two, but also the second thing that I think you need to learn to get your arms around in order to get better results in Luminar Neo. Now because this is a grungy graffiti alley, I'm gonna go ahead and just slap some structure on this thing across the entire photo. No masking, no regard for anything. It's just the whole thing is getting structured. That's not a tip. That's just something I'm doing in the photo. Now, the third thing that you have to learn, and this is incredibly important and very detailed, and that is masking. Now, there's a whole lot about masking that you can learn, and I can't cover it all in this video. I do have a course if you want to check out my course for masking. It's uh, linked down below. And second thing about that is um, if you want to pick up weekly tips about how to use Luminar Neo, and not just check out my videos every once in a while, subscribe to my newsletter. It's down below. You get free presets, you get a free ebook. You learn a lot about Luminar Neo by subscribing if you want to do that. But tip number three is masking. So I'm going to go into develop. And this is a sort of a sub tip is not just masking, but also learning to use develop again and again and again, because it's all about control. The first time you use it's develop raw and then super contrast, etc. But then I start using develop again and again and again. And I use develop for dodging and burning because it's a powerful tool that allows you to control the light. What I want to do here is actually get a luminosity mask and I'm going to go play with these shadows. I'm looking to control light and temperature. And I want to do that in specific tonal areas. 
So a luminosity mask is going to allow me to really condense the tonal range down into the darker areas, fade it a little bit into some of the other uh, kind of mid-tone areas. But basically, everything in red is going to be covered in this mask. That's what the luminosity mask did for me. I'm going to take this exposure down about a negative 0.3 and change. I'm also going to reduce the temperature because it's just way too warm in those areas. And I think personally that a shadow area should be cooler or bluer. That's why I adjust temperature. And that's why I think dodging and burning would develop is way superior to dodge and burn among many other reasons. I'll do a dedicated video about that because I think it's so important. But if you look at the before, a lot brighter in these shadow areas and a lot warmer. And then after, a lot cooler, which makes more sense. It also creates a little bit more contrast in the photo, which I love, uh, but also uh, a little bit darker. So develop using that again and again and again with masks to dodge and burn and things like that. Super important. And that's why that's tip number three. Now, speaking of tips, tip number four is actually using linear gradients. And that's because they're incredibly powerful. And as much as I love luminosity masks and color masks, all those kind of things, I use linear gradients all the time. And in this case, I'm going to drag this linear gradient something like that. And I'm just trying to cover a big section of that photo uh, kind of up there, kind of towards the uh, top left corner. And that's because this is another version of dodge and burn. I'm just reducing the exposure there because it's just way too bright. And I want to kind of shape the light a little bit. So I'm darkening that to make it a little bit less distracting. I'm going to cool it off like I did in the other one and uh, maybe something about like that. But I'm also going to add some tint. And so that's part of this tip is consider adding some tint when you also change the temperature and the exposure value in different areas because it's really yellowy warm. And I think it throws off the look of the photo. There it is before, way too bright, way too yellow. Now cooler and a little tamer with a little bit of tint added. That yellow to me gets to looking like a green. Adding tint to it uh, towards magenta gets it away from the green, makes, uh, makes it, in my opinion, look a little bit better. Now, I mentioned using develop again and again. This is tip number five, and this is using develop with mask, and this time I'm going to use a color mask. These are the new masks, and I absolutely love them, and you can use color masks to dodge and burn. Yeah, you really can. So I'm going to grab this white here, and I know it's white, but it shows up as a color in terms of this masking tool. So I'm selecting that. It's going to highlight everything in yellow. You can see that. You can collapse this range a little bit if you'd like to. I'm going to go ahead and do that to kind of isolate that color a little bit more to just to really the white stuff. See how the blue was covered? Uh, now it's not. So I'm going to increase the exposure because I want those whites to be more white. I want them to pop a little bit more. And I'm actually going to go into the whites here and lift those a little bit as well. So maybe like mid-20s, something about like that. So if you look at those areas, especially that like uni unicorn graffiti a bit there, if you look at the before, it's a lot uh, more faded, a lot less white, a little bit kind of almost muddy, and now it's really popping quite a bit. Now you can refine that mask further with a brush to erase things and things like that, which I recommend doing depending on the photo. I think it works fine here the way I used it, but keep that in mind that you can alter these color masks with a brush by erasing or painting if you need to. Now having done that, I'm going to do the same thing again. So this is not a new tip. This is the same tip, just with a different color. And what I want to do here is come in and build a mask for this green. And I'm going to pop that just a little bit as well. So grab that green. And what I want to do, I'm not going to adjust the range any. I'm just going to lift the exposure. Uh, so I'm going to do about a 0.4 or something like that. And I'm going to lift the saturation a little bit. So I technically lied earlier. I said I don't apply saturation. I do when I'm masking develop. I never use saturation on develop raw. Uh, so this is just essentially a repeat of what I did before. But if you look at all the greens, it grabbed the green in that little boat kind of thing that that unicorn is sitting in, but also it grabbed some of the green around that area and it brightened it up, gave it a little bit more punch and um, just kind of doubling down on color masking for dodge and burn, but also for color adjustments. Now, the sixth tip is actually going to be to use Accent AI, but it's really important that you control this with the mask. That's why masking is so important because there's amazing tools in Luminar, but you can't let them run amok. You have to take these, uh, con you have to take control of these tools and tell them what to do and, and where to go. And that's what masking is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and drag a uh, radial gradient here into the center. I'm going to go ahead and expand it, something like that. And now I'm going to give a pretty healthy dose of Accent AI. So let's say at about a 40. All I'm doing is just popping that center of the photo. I don't want to apply Accent AI, Accent AI everywhere. 
because it's just too much, especially at 40. But 40 in a contained area that's already got a lot of stuff going on. It's got some nice structure. It's got tons of color. It's got plenty of light. It's giving a little extra pop. So before and after gives a nice little pop to the image. So Accent AI controlled with a mask. That's tip number six. Now I'm going to wrap this up with a vignette, which is just going to be pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but that's actually not the last tip. The vignette is a great tool. I use it on lots of photos to control the light. And one of the best parts is this inner light. I love to pop that just a little bit. And I'm huge on feathering and roundness. I prefer to take those most of the time, pretty much all the way to the right with a little bit of inner light. So before and after nice framing for the image, which is important and I love, uh, but tip number seven, and that is, don't forget, even though you've added a vignette, which is typically the last step, you can go back to something like develop and still make a global adjustment. Everything that we did with these masks, those are local adjustments because they're masked in, so they're applying to a specific part of the photo, a local area, as opposed to the entire photo, the global area. But sometimes I come back at the end of my edit and decide I need to do a little something else to my photo. That's where I go back to develop and apply things globally. In this case, what I'm looking at is I still see quite a bit of yellow, which almost looks kind of green to me. I'm going to come back and adjust the tint across the entire photo, drag that to like 22, 23, something like that. All I'm doing, and maybe a little bit more, maybe 25, 24, that's a good place to land. All I'm doing is getting away from that kind of greenish yellow tint. And a lot of that comes out of these kind of lights that you find in cities. When I'm shooting city streets at nights, I have these kind of lights and I'm always playing with the temperature and tint because it just kind of drives me nuts. Um, and I do that in this case as well. The lights plus all the color there, it just feels like it needs a little bit of tint to get away from that greenish yellow. So there it is before, more greenish yellow, and there it is after, a little bit more magenta kind of away from that color. Uh, that's just something I personally like to do is to wrap things up with develop uh, to adjust temperature and tint. And I might even take the temperature slightly down. I didn't really have this in my notes to do, but sometimes I'll just play around with that. But I like the interplay of going left with temperature and right with tint. Uh, but the other piece of this is because you have all these other controls, it doesn't hurt to come back and take a look the overall contrast in the image. So that's adjusting highlights, shadows, overall contrast, maybe even blacks and whites, but it gives you a nice little finishing touch to your photo. Let me show you the before and after. So that's before this final develop adjustment, this global adjustment at the end, and that's after. Let me show you the entire result of this photo. There's the before. Uh, let me do this here. Before and after. Let me close that and just do the full window. There it is before obviously quite a bit darker and after, but we've been able to adjust the light and control it, adjust and control the colors, all those sort of things, because taking advantage of the tips that I shared, the tools that I shared, and the mass that I demonstrated allows you to take super powerful control and precise control over your image, giving you a final result that you like. Now, graffiti tunnel full of grunge and grit, which I love. I love urbex and all that stuff. I just don't get to shoot it that much. You may not, and that's okay, but this stuff that we talked about in this video, it works every time, every photo. I don't care what your subject is. It works. So give it a shot. Try these tips. It'll help you get better at editing in Luminar Neo. Join my newsletter if you haven't yet to pick up my newsletter weekly with more tips as well as my free ebook about Luminar, which will help you as well. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope you got something out of this. I'll be back really soon. You guys take care and until next time, adios.